You said you want to deport the children of illegal immigrants. I said the entire family unit. You said you want to deport the entire family unit of undocumented immigrants. Yes. Entire family unit. So let's just be clear about what you mean by that. So someone was born to undocumented immigrants today. Let's say you're president today. You've implemented this policy. They're adults. They work. They pay taxes in the U.S. They vote in the U.S. Maybe they voted for you. They shouldn't but, be voting. They're, but, well, right right now, yeah. under current, yeah. you know, under, under law as it is right now, they vote. You become president. Those, the 25-year-old, 30-year-old that was born to undocumented immigrants, their parents and they themselves are deported to say they, they're from Venezuela. They all go back to yes. Venezuela. So I want to give you my full perspective on this issue because I will acknowledge this is a difficult question. And what makes this a difficult question is that many people who are in this country illegally are still good people who came here for a better life for their family in part because of a U.S. president, that's President Biden right now, that gave a tacit and implicit signal that it was okay for them to come. And I think that that's in many ways not their fault per se. It is the fault of an administration that gave them a wink and a nod and said it was okay to come over, that we have laws, but you don't have to follow them. Right, but there are many so that, that came under, under the Trump administration as well, and, and well, many under more Obama who, and you know, yeah, others. So, there are people who have been living undocumented in this country for a long time. That's right. Who have had children, who have grandchildren. And so I'm using Biden as an example now, sure. but you're right. There have been periods in our history in the last 20 years where we've had ambiguous policy. I want to, however, lead the United States thinking about, similar to the national debt question, on the timescales of history, not on the timescales of tomorrow. And I think the only way we're going to be able to stand as a nation really committed to the rule of law is to behave in a manner that actually means it. So I will not, and this is why I you know, respectfully interrupted you earlier to say yeah. that I will never separate parents from children well, you've been very as a deterrent, that, but we would course. take the family unit and return them to their country of origin as respectfully and but humanely as possible. But is this a cool turkey rip? Like, is it- It has whole... to be. But I think that, okay. but I think that, I think that we will provide a path back through legal meritocratic immigration for those who have demonstrated themselves to be law-abiding, contributing citizens of but, this country. But to be clear, you're talking about people who only speak English, who have lived in the United States their entire lives, are now going back to Guatemala, Venezuela, to countries that they know nothing about. So you are picking the, the exception rather than the norm in the hard case. But but to be frank, no, but there are the answer thousands includes of yes. These, these people in the United States. So I I think the right answer is we have to stand for the rule of law. We can't be a nation that says we have these laws, but we somehow turn the other direction to reward the people who broke the law, while there are millions more waiting to come here legally through the front door who we say can't come. We can't abide that hypocrisy. And I don't think we can look our kids in the eye and tell them that you have to follow the law if the way our so government itself right refuses itself to American follow the law. Citizen. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.